Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the Homegrown Happy Hour podcast. Again, this week we are doing it Zoom style. We're having some fun with this little software here. And joining me this week is somebody I've been wanting to talk to for quite a while now, and we finally got him on Zoom, Mr. Scott Cable. How's it going, buddy? It's going good, man. How are you? Doing good. I forgot to ask you before we hopped on here. Cable, right? Cable? Yep. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Some some last names are a little bit tricky. Like I get Griffin all the time instead of Griffith. I can, I can do, see do that. you get anything out of Cable, or is like most people just automatically get it? Most people get it, but there's always that one person that's like, "How do you spell that?" And it's like, <laughs> like Cable, like the TV, the cable guy. You know, like I get that joke <laughs> so much. <man>. Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, the cable guy's got the cable guy. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, at least you're working for a cable company. That, that that would make it a little bit worse. Have you ever like, thought about changing your last name to Dish or anything? Maybe <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. I did have Dish for a while, though, and I really enjoyed Dish. And then they raised the prices too much. And I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, that ain't good, you know? And nowadays it's all streaming services, and everybody's got a streaming service nowadays. Yeah. It's a such a weird time, man. Like I was thinking of this Zoom um, right before we uh, called and all that stuff. Last year, I would have never thought of this as an option. It would have just been people in the studio talking as always. But now it's, right. it's amazing that we have this technology here that you're a completely different place. I'm a completely different place, yet yeah. we're looking at each other, talking to each other face to face. It's really neat. No, it is, man. It's so the idea of it is so crazy to me. It's like as a globe, we have never been more connected. Yeah. But in some ways, like we've never been more disconnected. Mm. You know? It's I, like I agree with that. everyone, you know, the old saying, opinions are like, you know, everyone has an opinion nowadays and most of them everyone, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> really. It's like we didn't we didn't know this before we were disconnected. Like people kind of suck. Yeah, they do. Well, <laughs> I, I, I I like to think. Well, it's unfortunately I do think a majority of the population suck. I think that uh, <laughs> we we haven't let natural selection do its thing over the last few decades. And you know, back in the day, man, the strong survived. That's why you had these amazing people like Einstein and Henry Ford and all these creators and innovators and workers and people that progressed us to what we are nowadays. And the stupid people ate, got ate by bears or something like that. that that's how life Amazing. was. And there's a few people <laughs> nowadays that need to be ate by bears probably. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't know about that specifically, but I'm playing, I'm playing, but uh, maybe, maybe they shouldn't. Maybe they shouldn't be allowed to do some stuff. Maybe like an IQ test before you have children or something. I don't know. Have you seen the movie? Uh, what was the old movie back in the day, man? Uh, Idi- Idiorock? I- Idiocracy. Idiocracy. Yeah. Man. man Dude, really- that movie really, I mean, was ahead of its time. They hit the nail on the head, man. Yes, they did. Like, it's like, and for the last like five years or so, that movie has been a documentary for me. <laughs> You know, it's like some weird stuff happened <laughs> that affected everyone. And the only thing running through my mind is, oh, man, when are we going to start watering plants with Gatorade? <laughs> you know, it's like, I think we're at that point where it would make sense for someone to do that. And the world would just be like, maybe he has a point. Yeah, all, you know? all these futuristic movies tried to like, predict the future and give us flying cars and all of this crazy stuff but no nah, idiocracy hit the nail on the head they got yeah, it oh uh, dude i saw something earlier i was just scrolling through facebook and it was like they interviewed some kid in like 63 or something and they were like what do you think the year 2000 will be like mm-hmm. and this kid was like well i'll probably on be on a spaceship going to the moon holding like robot court with robots and after i'm done you know i'll go home and take my cabbage peel that's my meal for the day because it gives me everything i need and 
yeah. and all this stuff. But he just kept talking about all these robot things. And I was like, man, that's just like a 40 year difference. Yeah. And, and you know, you know, in some ways too, he was kind of almost right. We ain't there yet, but I mean, yeah. they are like already planning the space travel and stuff. And that's crazy about the pill. I could see that being a thing one day. Yeah. Oh, it's just a matter of time. We, man, we have a pill for everything now. Yeah. You know, if you need to eat, take this pill. It'll make you hungry. If you don't need to eat, take this pill. It will make you not hungry. You yeah. know, if you need to sleep, we got a pill for that. If you're sad, we got a pill for that. If you're too happy, we got a pill for that too. <laughs> it, it's crazy, man. We don't I, need so many pills. <laughs> nah, man. I, I, I try to, uh, I've got a book at my house actually that has, uh, natural remedies from the native americans and there's all types of natural ways to help with uh, all types of different problems whether it's mentally or physically and you don't have to go through any pharmaceutical companies or anything like that you just walk out into the woods and pick up a few things make you either some tea or there's all types of stuff that you can do yeah. I, I try to go natural routes as much as possible i don't even really take ibuprofen man if I don't have to, I'm not doing it. Yeah. As I will put it off until like, I absolutely cannot stand the pain anymore. Yeah. I'm you know, like I've been in and out of hospitals my whole life. Um, I have heart problems. Mm. So I've had open heart surgery twice. Whoa. Yeah. H how old are you? If you don't mind me asking. The first time I was nine. Wow. And then 10 years later, I had the um, same surgeon, same hospital. I was on the same floor I was when I was nine years old the second time. Had the same charge nurse, and I was one bed over from where I was the first time in the ICU. Wow. Like, it, it was weird. Um, basically, the only difference was the second time around, I had a beard that was, like, down to here. <laughs> <laughs> and, like... I was in a children's hospital <laughs> and so <laughs> nurses were coming by and they were like, <laughs> well, and I had to shave that for the surgery. And so like they had to go to like a different hospital <laughs> to get like clippers and a razor. Cause they're just, they weren't used to having that. <laughs> and so I went to the bathroom and I shaved it off. And then the nurses who saw me the day before, came by and they saw me without the beard and they were like and I'm like yeah it's me <laughs> <laughs> well what what's going on with your heart I've got a dog that has an AFib she has to take a lot of medicine every single day yeah. what, what's the, so, the deal with you so I was born with aorta stenosis so basically my aorta valve didn't work right mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so when I was nine, what they did was they replaced my aorta valve with my pulmonary valve and my pulmonary valve with a cadaver valve. And naturally over time, those cadaver valves, they tend to wear out, you know? Yeah. So, um, at the time I was thinking of going to, um, the art institutes of Tennessee. And so that would involve me moving to Nashville and all this stuff. And so, my cardiologist at the time was like, well, let's take a look, make sure everything's good. And that way, you know, if you're fine, won't have to worry about anything. And if not, we can get it out of the way before you move down there and all this stuff. It's like, okay, well, they found some stuff that I guess they didn't like. So they went ahead and scheduled surgery again, but it wasn't supposed to be open heart surgery. They were going to do it like a heart cath. And so, I was originally supposed to be in the hospital for like three days. Mm -hmm. And when they got in there, they found that that cadaver valve had calcified. So it had hardened. So they couldn't do anything with it the way they intended. So they had to open me back up. And so what was originally supposed to be like a three night stay ended up being, I was there for a week. Wow. You know, and got opened up again and all that stuff. And they said, I'll, I'll have to have that surgery again. Um, but they said it could be five years. It could be 10 years. It could be 20 years. 
we don't know how long it's going to last, you know. That is crazy, man. Yeah. They yeah. said pr- probably the next time I have it done, it's probably going to be someone controlling a robot arm, you know, doing yeah. the – I'm like, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I, it'll get to the <laughs> point, man, where they can figure out consciousness and put us in robots and we live forever. They're, they're doing something similar to that. Like they have a robot that uh, if you have enough videos – of somebody it can use that voice yeah like the robot talks in that voice if you have enough if you have enough video of the person that died and you can upload it into this robot the robot okay. learns that voice and then will communicate as that person yeah i think i saw something about that i well hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about that <laughs> yeah there, there's some inventions that i'm think that i think like oh is that that's that's cool like i'm i'm not one of those people that's like like oh we're playing god i think that like certain technologies are necessary for progressing us but some of these some of it's just weird and creepy like yeah that's very like that's getting into like black mirror territory (laughs) i'm like let's not do this that is a crazy show man the uh i watched the interview with the creator of that and he said that they had to like take a uh break from that show because they were kind of getting creeped out because some of the episodes that they were making like were becoming reality. Yeah. Like they were almost predicting the future with that show. Yeah. And some of that, man, there's one episode. I ain't going to dive into too much detail because this is a, for some reason, a family program, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, the, 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 I mean, the, it's the, a family show. The, you the, know. the two dudes, though, that were in the video game. Okay. I know the one you're talking about. I haven't watched it yet. But I know what you're talking about, and it's like, yeah, at the I end, can see of, that happening. You know, at the end of that episode, you're it's such a mind boop, that like yeah. you're, you're just you're staring at the TV afterwards, like, what did I just watch? Man, the when I first watched it, I was like, oh, this seems like a cool show, and I I can't the first episode with the uh, the prime minister and the pig. Yeah, dude, I was. That like, was- I was like, what? A, that's a hell of a way to open up a show. Yeah. I was like, what am I watching? <laughs> Why am I watching this? And then I kept watching. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a car wreck, man. You can't turn away. Yeah. And the episode with uh, the dude who, um, well, the video game, they like have the thing that like hooks into their neck or whatever. Yeah. And it like, lets you experience virtual reality or something. And like you go, he goes through this whole thing of like being trapped in a haunted house or something. Yeah. And it cuts to the end, and they're like, "How long was he there?" And he was like, "Less than a second. I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. Like, give it ten years, and that's going to be reality, you know? Yeah. So that's the thing, man. Like, the future is so hard to predict nowadays with all of the advancements that we're doing. I talked about this last week. I ain't going to talk about this too much, but the Neuralink thing still freaks me out. And that's oh, yeah. sometime this year. I okay. Mean, have you, have you watched a movie called Possessor? Mm-mm. Okay. Dude, I don't know if you're a big horror nerd. Oh, you've... well, I'm not like a horror nerd, but I love horror movies. Okay. Like you follow me on social media. Oh, you yeah, know, I'm I, a horror I, that's what, that was one of the topics I wanted to talk about for, for sure. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Well, this movie, is it's david cronenberg's son so like the king of body horror and disgusting his son is now making movies uh his name's brandon cronenberg i think basically this movie is about a hit woman who uses something incredibly similar to Neuralink. She takes over her target's body and like becomes her target. Like she has to watch like thousands of hours of video, you know, all this stuff. And she learns how to imitate that person with their emotions and like how they would react to things. And she like takes over their body for however long it takes and like basically wrecks their life and the only way that she can get back into her body to have a successful mission is to cause the target to commit suicide. Whoa. So she will like have this target commit like 
some murder or something. And then when the police show up, like have, you know, her do the thing and she goes back into her body. But the company that she works for, like takes over, like everyone has Neuralink basically. It's not Neuralink, but everyone basically has Neuralink in that world. And that's what they're using to like commit these assassinations. And like, so every time, ever since I've watched that, every time I hear Neuralink, I'm just like, nope, ain't nobody gonna kill me. You know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Not gonna happen. Dude. I'm, I'm also like a little concerned, like <laughs> technology in the body that, especially that connects to your central nervous system. Like, man, mm. one little spark and you're fried, literally, you know? Well, that too, and like hackers. People hack homes, people hack cars. What's to stop that? You know, I, I don't yeah. I, I would really like to know all the precautions that they're taking about this, but yeah. I, hell, it's so new, they haven't even tried it out yet. There's kind yeah, of I, I saw something that Elon said. He was like, he said something about him maybe being the first person to get it. And I'm like, go ahead, buddy. <laughs> you go, you do your thing, bub. You know, it's hard to trust any of these guys. He can say that he has it. Oh, cute kitty. Oh, well, listen, my cat's internet famous. So, uh, dude, I, I, I feel you there. I've got a manager <laughs> at my house. I just don't trust these billionaires, man. Like, I don't, it's hard to trust people with that much money. Yeah. And now, now he's like the richest person in the world. Some, well, it keeps going, but I think, I think yeah. something like that. Like, at the he's moment. You know, it's here's what I want to know. Okay, you got Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, billions upon billions of dollars. These guys are worth. Yeah, Why has nobody became Iron Man or Batman yet? <laughs> I was getting ready to say that. that not happened. I mean, like, Man. The, like we are living in the age of the quote unquote evil genius. That can be a thing. That is yeah. a likely possibility. Yeah, freaking like. Terrible. And let's face it, if anyone is going to become Iron Man, it's going to be Elon Musk. Oh, yeah. He's definitely going that route. <laughs> you know? Like, Jeff Bezos, he looks – now, he looks like the evil genius. I think one day it is going to be <laughs> Elon Musk versus Jeff Bezos. They're going to be in the sky duking it out with lasers. <laughs> and I, I yeah. watch. Yeah, man. Oh, it's going to be pay-per-view. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be like Mike Tyson you know? Boy Jones Jr. <laughs> Jeff Bezos is going to be our Lex Luthor. I can see he already looks like it with the bald yeah. and everything. He's yeah. got the look. And his wife divorced him, took almost all his fortune. That's probably pissed him off. So now hey, he but he's like, still hey. like the dude's still he's able to do anything he wants. Yeah. You know, like with no with no worries. Oh, I'm gonna buy this island. How much is that gonna put me back? Ah, uh, two point three million. Ah, uh, I'll make it up next week. It's you know, like people like that exist. Like I have to be careful about spending five dollars. They yeah. lose a billion, and it's it's, yeah. it's a joke on Twitter or something like that. Man, I signed up for a, another streaming service a uh, day before yesterday, and, I, and it only costs like five bucks a month. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> dude, I feel you. I've been watching. Do I need this? No, but do I want it? Yes. Which one was it? Um, Arrow Video. They're like a they're a UK based company who they do. Um, <laughs> they release stuff that has like long been out of print. They're kind of like the Criterion Collection for like gritty, sleazy movies. Okay. You know, I know they do a, they do a lot of horror stuff, and they have a lot of like. 70s exploitation films and stuff like that stuff that like criterion collection would be like no yeah i, I, <laughs> yeah. I get what you're saying yeah. there's and just, criterion collection is themselves are kind of like pretty open-minded but i just i just don't see them having some of the stuff arrow has well for when it, like when it comes to horror movies and oh yeah i definitely want to dive into this topic with you it's oh, man, like, much time like, like, it seems like nowadays and this is just my opinion they almost go for the gore factor instead of the fear factor of the film. Yeah. 
Like, like uh, Eli Roth is a good example. Like Green Inferno. Yeah. That, that's – I love the whole process about how they built – well, how they made that movie about like mm -hmm. actually going to for the people that don't know, uh, Green Inferno, rated R. Uh, it should be more <laughs> than R, actually. Like you should probably be older than eighteen to watch it. But it's uh, these <laughs> people go to a island filled with cannibals, and some of them get. Yeah. But it's basically his version of Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah. They wanted to do like an homage to that movie, and that one, dude. That and man, but Cannibal, Cannibal Holocaust, seventies, like eighties. 70s the um okay so that movie was made before there was like animal cruelty laws so when they're ripping the turtle that's they're actually turtle. killing a turtle that's a real turtle that's all real and filmed and so like people the director i can't remember the guy's name um he's an italian director he got taken to court and was sued for that film he had to prove that the actors were still alive before he would be set free. Like the yeah. film was that crazy, you know, and still it's not something that I like rewatch, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like I watched it once and I think I'm good. You yeah. Know? I was one and done with that film too, man. For the seventies, that was, they were pushing it, dude. I, yeah. And, but, but and when it comes to green inferno, I love Eli Roth because he was a genius about the way that he went about it. He went to an actual island with actual villagers that that has never seen electricity in their entire lives. Like the way that you see them in that movie is how they're made. And Cannibal Holocaust was that the same way? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty they much? basically yeah. they basically went to this island, and <laughs> everyone told them before they left they were like what are you doing? <laughs> like, this is stupid. There are actual cannibals out there, you know? But and I'm, so they, they went for it though. And that's, you got, I, nothing but respect, but like I was saying, like, it just, it seems like they want more of the gore than they do the actual fear factor of horror movies nowadays. Yeah. It's man. Something that I've noticed over like <clears throat> the last couple of years of like really digging into like horror movies and just, film in general is that western audiences audiences tend to do they tend to gravitate towards one thing whereas the rest of the world they're able to pull out things that we wouldn't necessarily think of you mm -hmm. know so like it's gotten to the point now to where like i watch more foreign language films than i do anything spoken in english <laughs> you know like i'm that i'm that guy but there's a there's a korean movie called the wailing and oh, it's made its way to like the top of my list just movies in general you know it's so good the plot is so good there's genuinely disturbing moments mm -hmm. and there's a good resolution at the end you know, it may, not in the sense that everything is resolved, but in the sense that there's a, such a twist, you know, and it's like, what is going on? I have to know more. Yeah. You know, and I just, I don't get that from Hollywood anymore. <laughs> you know, it's, but, it but, doesn't. But they go for sensationalism, maybe. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Like the, the, the best, See, I, what I love about a good movie or even a good TV show is the plot and yeah, the suspense same. and the wow factor. The best thing that I've seen in the last few years is probably Ozark. Have you watched that show? I have not, but I've had several people tell me to watch it. Dude, you, especially you, you would love <laughs> it. But like, well, like horror movies, though, I'm trying to, The Conjurings, like all, I can't remember all of them that tie in with that universe right. those were pretty good i'll give See, them i can't get into those movies and i don't know what it is <clears throat> like the insidious movies the conjuring like that whole i love that they've made a whole universe yeah. you know i love that there's this shared thing but for whatever reason i just can't get into them i watch them and i'm like <sighs> like um everyone was raving about um the haunting of hill house 
yeah the tv the netflix adaptation you know man i forced myself to watch like half of that show and i'm like this is so boring <laughs> like i can't do it why are people enjoying this i i ask that about a lot of stuff nowadays but especially the horror movies like whenever i go back in the day it's about like, like the shirt that you got on right now halloween the old yeah. chuckies and stuff like that even the chuckies like i was terrified of man that, you know, like chucky whenever i was a kid but like yeah. growing up like i seen the seed of chucky i'm like this is hilarious this is one of the exactly. okay. things i've ever seen in my life he kills so, spears it's funny. i have a i have a very i i'm the same way i used to like hate scary movies you know i was i was mortified of chucky okay and i have this very specific memory of <clears throat> me and my mom were home and she was just flipping through the TV, you know, <clears throat> and one of those movies was on. I can't remember which one it was. All I know is that it was Chucky. And my mom, my mom likes scary movies every now and then. She was like, do you want to watch this? And I'm like hiding behind the pillow. Like, no, no. I was, I was like six or seven. And then I, what's really funny is that I have this other specific memory of going to our neighbor's house, who is my mom's cousin, actually. And we watched the movie, for whatever reason, we watched the movie Tremors. Yeah. I love that movie, and I love that franchise. But that, I, that, I very remember that being the first time I watched that movie, and I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah. And I remember a couple of weeks later, I found it on TV when I was flipping through. I'm like, oh, hey, that's that movie with those big worms. I like that, <laughs> you know? And then I found out there's a part two. There's a second one. And they're not worms anymore. You know, it's like, this is awesome. And so I, from there, I kind of like, I always loved like Scooby-Doo and like Courage the Cowardly Dog and that kind of stuff. <clears throat> but from Tremors, it's kind of like my gateway into horror movies and stuff. Hmm. And once I started getting into it, I went back. And when I say I went back, I mean, I went back to like, the 20s and the 30s you know so i watched like the universal movies bela lugosi as dracula and boris karloff as frankenstein and worked my way back to the present yeah so i went i went the universal route and then i got into like michael myers and nightmare on elm street and those movies yeah. and then i got into like the actually scary stuff you know and started getting into like Dario Argento and all these foreign films and stuff. And now it's just like, I have to go to Japan. Didn't they make a third Tremors? Wasn't that a thing? There's like seven of those things now, man. Dude, uh, Kevin Bacon done a commercial. Uh, I seen it last week. Yeah, he brings back Tremors for like a second. Like, his, <laughs> like he mispronounces it and the guy and the other guy from Tremors, I forget his name. He's like, but it's Tremors. Oh, oh, Michael Gross. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a oh, <laughs> great commercial. <laughs> he was like, it's Tremors. <laughs> and, that's, and that's it. That's all we got. I'd love for there to be another Tremors. Didn't they talk about a TV show or something? Uh, like there, that? there was a TV show. Okay. But it didn't have Kevin Bacon. And there was talk a couple of years ago of Kevin Bacon doing a TV show. And they kind of made like a kind of like a faux trailer for mm -hmm. it to kind of like i guess just to like judge reaction to it and it looked badass you know and for whatever reason it never got made and i'm like that this hurts my soul <laughs> you know? in the age of remakes man that would be a good one did you watch the uh chucky remake not yet but i love aubrey plaza oh yeah dude Whew. i love aubrey plaza, I, I got a while so i can't say too much but uh she's a great actor i'll say that yeah I'll say yeah that. but uh, oh yeah and, and i think that uh mark hamlin doing the voice too i i know people were kind of nervous about it but from the previews that i've seen in the little clips i've watched yeah he kills it i mean heck he was the joker back in the batman cartoon he killed that yeah man he's such a great voice actor like he's such a great actor but such a great voice actor yeah you would never know it's him yeah, when I heard like he was cast as Chucky, I was like, I don't know, you know. Yeah. Mark Hamill in horror. Okay. 
but from every, everyone has told me, it's like, oh man, it's so good. They did such a good job with it. And I just haven't sat down and checked it out yet. Uh, well, I, I guess they're, I guess in that movie, they kind of started from the beginning again. So they don't yeah. have a bride there. What was her name? The woman that played the bride. Oh, Jennifer Tilly. Jennifer Tilly. God, yeah. if they make a part two, they have to bring her back. She was, she was uh, well, great in those movies. There's some kind of, something is going on with it. I don't know what, I don't know if it's a sequel to the Aubrey Plaza film or if it's just like a continuation of the original thing. But I, I follow her on Instagram and she posted a while back. She was like, I can't believe I'm still doing something with this doll 20 years later. Oh, you know, I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, something's happening. That'll, that'll be cool if she's involved because her and uh, uh, Brad Dourif. Yeah. You know, they made those movies. Oh, like, yeah. that was all them, you know? Especially was- Brad Dourif. Like, man, that dude deserves so much, you know? And he doesn't get the recognition he deserves. Those were great films. They just weren't as scary. The 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 Bride of Chucky and the Seed of Chucky was not as scary to me as the old school. Yeah. They yeah. just had a lot of humor. And and I and I liked that because I don't know, kind of made Chucky likable in a sense. I think that all horror yeah. movies like <clears throat> well, well, not every horror movie, I would say, but sometimes you can see why the quote unquote bad guys do what it is that they do and you yeah. start to see yourself sometimes in these well, bad guys like the joker that, that's a good example yeah it's well it's the same thing as like frankenstein frankenstein was the monster mm-hmm. not his creation exactly you know, we relate more to the monster than we do to the doctor who created life you yeah. know and that's it's been that way all throughout and that's why a lot of horror people are like yeah i relate to being the outcast you know i relate to to being whoever i almost said freddy krueger but let's not <laughs> idolize a pedophile well well and uh some of these uh scary movies too are based on actual events wasn't nightmare on elm street based on real events that took place i seen yeah. that on facebook or google yeah oh. uh wes craven saw um there's was, there's was like a kid in taiwan who he was convinced that like something was after him and he wasn't sleeping because he was thinking like if i go to sleep it's going to get me yeah and like his parents started giving him like sleeping pills and he wouldn't take them. And so I don't know what the actual cause of death was probably just like total body shutdown. Yeah. But like when he died, his parents found where he had stashed all the pills and they'd found like a coffee pot, like hidden in his like uh, closet that he was like using to stay awake. He was just drinking coffee to stay awake. Wow. And they found like slashes on his body. And so Wes Craven saw this in like a newspaper and was like, hmm, that's an interesting thing. And that, and that's how we got Freddy Krueger. Turned into a franchise. I watched the uh, Friday, thing, not Friday, but the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street remake that they done. A, it was a few years ago, like yeah. seven, eight years ago, something like that. Yeah. It was all right. I, yeah. What was the What was the guy that played Freddy back in the day? Uh, uh, Robert England. Robert England. Dude, with, yeah. without him, you know, it's just it ain't the he, same. Yeah, he is that character. Yeah. And like, um, the guy who played him in the remake, uh, I think his name's Jackie Earl Haley. Um, he was Rorschach in the Watchmen movie. Hmm, didn't know that. Like, he he's a great actor, but. The way that they went about that remake, they they took all the humor out of it, and I get they want to like make Freddy scary again and stuff. But after like twelve movies of Robert England, like no no one's gonna measure up to Freddy. <laughs> it's hard yeah. to fill them shoes, man. I yeah. was, dude, I loved uh, Freddy versus Jason. To me, that is one of yeah. my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. Man, there's um, 
a while back, they did uh, these two documentaries. Um, they did one on Nightmare on Elm Street and then one on Friday the 13th. And the Friday the 13th documentary is like seven hours long. Wow. Like they go through every movie and they talk to like uh, the director, producers, as many of the actors that they can for every film. Mm -hmm. And they do it for Nightmare too. And the Nightmare one is like four hours long. And they're so, so good. Such good documentaries. But when they all, they both get to Freddy versus Jason. Yeah. And they go through like, they said at one point there was like 150 scripts going around for that movie, Dang. you know, and there was like talk about throwing in Michael Myers for some reason. There was talk about throwing in um, Ash from the Evil Dead movies, the Bruce Campbell character for some reason. And like all this weird stuff, like. That don't make any sense. Exactly. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's like they talked about like throwing in the Predator. <laughs> for some reason it's like why like yeah, that that's just pushing it right there i wish they would have yeah. done something like chucky versus a leprechaun or something that would, <laughs> that would be cool yeah that would be cool i would but love to see i, I wonder if we're ever going to get another like horror film like that where it's somebody versus somebody i think what they ended up doing was um they continued the story in comic book hmm and and I think in the comic book that was when um, Ash from the Evil Dead series showed up, and it was like this weird thing. But I love it, those movies. Uh, I what, what was his name? Bruce Campbell, the guy that played. Yeah, yeah, great actor, phenomenal actor. It's but so that's, good. That, that, that's a little bit weird though. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like not bringing those. No, they have done the TV show, didn't they? The, uh, they did a TV show. They're doing a sequel, and I think I think Bruce Campbell is directing. Huh. Maybe that might be what it is. This is but it's it's. <laughs> dude, I remember as a little kid watching that movie. I'm like, this dude is a badass. Like, I want yeah. this guy whenever I want a chainsaw as an arm. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. The video game Army of is Darkness. awesome too, man. I never played the video game. It's, it's, it's Army awesome. of Darkness though was. That was the, I was like, I didn't make the connection for some reason when I first watched it that this was like Evil Dead. Yeah. For some, for whatever reason. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. I, I wish there was more of this. Turns out there was. <laughs> they just don't make horror movies like they used to. Um, have no. you seen Haunting in Connecticut? Yes. That was, that was a good one. That, got that, one, that one was creepy. And that's another one that's like based on a true story. Yeah. You know? um, I remember there used to be a show on Discovery or one of those channels. Um, and it was just called A Haunting. Mm -hmm. And it was about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got, I got some of those on a DVD, actually. I got okay. a in Georgia and I got The Haunting in Connecticut one, too. Yeah. I was going to say that was, that was the first time that I heard that story was watching that show. And then I saw they were making a movie about it. And I was like, oh, well, that's cool. I'll check that out. And it ended up being pretty good. I think they did the one about the Georgia haunting, too, but I didn't watch it. Yeah, I mean, they, they were both really good. I, I just love stories like that. Do you think that it's possible for there to be, like, any real-life monsters? Not, like, in the form of human beings. I know there's plenty of them. But, like, right. actual other species of something out there. Man, um, hmm. I think that we're still finding like thousands of new species every day. Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> and being the history buff that I am, and like as much as I nerd out about like country music and horror movies and stuff, I'm equally as interested in like folklore and religion, and all of that stuff, there's a grain of truth in all of that. Yeah. You know, it's like, for example, the story of the Banshee, the screaming lady in Ireland that like foretells death. Mm -hmm. It's probably a barn owl. Yeah. Because, you know, they do that sometimes. And someone, it just happened to occur right before someone died, you know? Yeah. And so someone was like, oh, well, that's the lady coming to tell you you're dying yeah 
this was also the same time that they were burning people for being witches too you know I mean, yeah exactly. and i ended up doing my uh senior capstone paper in college over the salem witch trials and so i have like a crap load of books like dense history monographs about the salem witch trials and as interested as i am in all of that and like folk magic from new england and all this stuff it's like let's let's be honest with ourselves like it was probably these kids going to their dad's slave woman because she was from a foreign country and saying hey can you do that little fortune telling thing we want to know what our husband's going to do for a living yeah you know and one of them didn't like what they heard and i was like well let's just see what we can do with this and then from there it escalated out of hand you know whoa that's heartbreaking too man yeah I mean, a lot of innocent people lost their lives over some very stupid very stupid accusations and just weird yeah. about people wasn't there a thing uh I'm, I'm thinking that this is right i'm very tired and i'm also stupid it's not a good comment <laughs> but uh there was like wasn't there like molded bread at the time that would um, cause hallucinations yeah. and psychedelic yeah. effects that kind of uh amped up the whole yeah. trial it's part. called um ergotism ergot, ergot. it's a ergot. Yeah. it's a mold that gets on the rye yeah and it causes very intense hallucinations so basically from everything that i've read and i am by no means an historian i have no credibility to like give my thoughts on this or whatever but here's my thoughts on this is like all that stuff started out as um samuel parish he was like the basically the town leader and he owned a slave woman named tichaba she was from uh barbados i think i think um his daughter niece and a friend would go to her and she would show them like the fortune telling stuff there was a big thing that you could crack an egg into a glass of water and depending on how the egg settled in the glass you could read your future yeah and so the big thing then people were wanted to know especially young girls, like if they were going to get married, who they were going to marry, what kind of job their husband was going to have, you know, to find out if they were going to be successful, you know. And so Paris went out one night. And so the girls went to Tichaba and probably said, hey, let's do the fortune telling thing, you know, because Tichaba was the one who primarily took care of them. Mm -hmm. They did it. They went back home. Samuel Paris or his wife come back, probably saw that and was like, well, there's there's devilry afoot. And, you know, probably condemned Tichaba as a witch. And to avoid blame, these girls probably faked having ergot poisoning because it said that they would sit on the bed and they would shake, you know. Ergotism gives you violent hallucinations but also violent shaking and tremors in your body yeah so they could have just been faking it and claim that the devil was upon them and goody osborne she did it it's her exactly so now you've got tichba and goody osborne sitting in jail and then goody osborne wanted to blame whoever I can't remember the other woman's name. There was three of them that got sent at the same time. <clears throat> and then from there, it just kind of got out of hand because people would, if a woman was sent to jail and if she died in jail, basically whatever it was that she owned, people could just, someone could come in and just take it. So people coveted land back then. So if one of these women died in prison, they would basically relieve their land properties. Oh. Mm. See, I mean, what's more likely, somebody actually being a witch or just 
some butthole wanting to blame it on somebody to get yeah. slammed. Exactly. But here's the thing about it too, is like everyone was doing folk magic back then. The fortune telling stuff. Yeah. Like everyone was doing that. The clergymen back then were doing that. But it was okay for them because they were clergy. Mm. You know, they wanted to know are my crops gonna grow? What do I need to do at this time to make my <clears throat> harvest bountiful and all this stuff? Well, they were all hypocrites. Was it like was it a gypsy thing? I no, it was just it was just regular practices that they brought over from England yeah. that continued on. Everyone was doing it, but if she has some land that would be good for harvest, yeah, she's looking like a witch, you know. Huh. Man, it's just, it, it breaks my heart to go back and read some of the history of that because for the people that don't know out there, uh, <clears throat> wasn't it that they were tied to a chair? Some, <clears throat> excuse me, folks. Uh, sometimes they'd be tied to a chair, thrown out into the water, and if they drowned, then they weren't a witch. But if yeah, they floated up to the top, then they were a witch. They were, they were, they were guilty. Yeah. It's, it's it's crazy. Man. I mean, we used to be such barbaric people yeah. back in the days. I mean, we still are to an extent, but it was way yeah. worse back in the day. Oh yeah, um, most of the people who were witches, most of them ended up dying in jail. They would just rot in jail. Yeah, because they wouldn't let. Let's say one thing for the prison system: at least you get food nowadays. Yeah. yeah, they probably like just terrified to be around uh, those people, yeah. like like the prison guards or whatever they were called back then. If I was a prison guard and somebody said that that's a witch, I go get to, I go get close to her. <laughs> yeah, I'll throw her on me. or something, but that's yeah. about as good as it's going to get. So yeah. yeah, freaking heartbreaking, man. But uh, but I mean, do you think like there could be so, like you said earlier, there's a grain of truth in everything. Yeah. And yeah. I, I look back on some of these old techniques like the fortune tellers and the people that were maybe just so in tune with the world and people and nature. Maybe they were like really onto something. I don't know if I believe everybody that says they're a psychic, but I do yeah. believe that you can maybe get so in tune with the world that you can hear or see things that some people can't. Yeah, I do believe that. Like, there are definitely people who are more in tune with our surroundings than most of us. And there are people, some people, that I believe when they say they saw something, I believe they saw something. You know, some people do have compelling accounts and some people even have evidence. Um, depending on what it is they said they saw. Like, like, have you heard of like indigo children? Yeah, I just learned of that yesterday. Yeah, that's wild. I don't know though. Like, I'd love to think that there's some psychic kid out there that can tell us the future, but I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, yeah. just, you never know. And if you're not one of those people, I guess you can't make all the assumptions in the world. I would just love to talk to one of them. Yeah, and 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 see. It's still like such a new thing. The indigo thing is for the everybody that don't know out there. Uh, there's some children on Earth that say that they're psychic, identify as indigo, and are supposedly supposed to help us advance as a human race to the next whatever. I just don't know. Like, are are presidents indigos? Are CEOs indigos? Like, I don't know. Like. I, I watched a little documentary, and some of these indigo people were just sitting at the at, at their house painting. I don't know. If they're, <laughs> yeah. I, feel, I feel like they're like really progressing us as a society. <laughs> like I, I don't. Yeah, I, I just I don't know, man. I really yeah. don't know about that. But I, but I like to think that there's some, like may, maybe like the shamans in certain tribes or monks even monks, man. They are weird. <laughs> like. How they take, well, you know why they're weird? Why? Because for thousands of years, monks were the best brewers on the planet. Mm. They made the best alcohol on the planet. Did not know that. I just, I just think that it's crazy how they, they take the vow of silence and they learn to control their body so much that 
they're almost not 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 that they're invincible but they're invincible to pain they have such a high tolerance yeah like uh there was this one guy that uh was like like laying on spears like actual spears and they yeah. weren't piercing his body because yeah. he could do stuff with his body to not make the spears go in and the one that was uh i think that he was protesting against the vietnam war the one oh, that, when he set himself on fire yeah and the, and the rage against the machine album cover and stuff like that they the people that witnessed that said that he didn't scream there was no movement yeah he simply sat there and died and okay, i know i know you're a big comedy person but so like i love richard pryor yeah you know when richard pryor set himself on fire <laughs> yeah it was because of that monk <laughs> well he him there? and his like uh bodyguard was watching it on tv and his dude was like you see that man's conviction he's standing up for what he believes in and Richard was like, man, he set himself on fire. Screw his conviction. You know? <laughs> yeah. And then his his guard was like, he said he got up, went through the house. Then like five minutes later, he came running through on fire. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, maybe crack had something to do with that. It definitely did. Back in the day. It definitely did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> definitely and did. Pryor, Pryor's one of the best to ever do it, crack or not. <laughs> but but, but the monks, I mean, like, I know we can't talk to them because they take the whole vow of silence thing and it pisses me off because I'd love just to, <laughs> I mean, what goes on inside a person's mind if you don't talk your entire life? I mean, go decades without speaking a word. Yeah. I don't know, like, what, I don't know, I just love to get inside their mind and see what their thought process yeah. is. <clears throat> probably superhumans they can probably levitate at this point who knows yeah. man i took a uh, class in college on buddhism and i've an ex accused me of being a closeted buddhist <laughs> i'm not i'm i'm just it's intrigued a religion, though it really yeah. is yeah well there's there's secular buddhism now you know like you can be a buddhist and go through the practices and not necessarily have the pantheon of gods or whatever, you know, but some of the stuff that we talked about in that class, it was like, you have to be silent to do this, yeah. you know, to do it right. There's yeah. so much distraction in the world mm -hmm. that like, in order for you to achieve nirvana and reach enlightenment, I don't see how you can talk and do that. Yeah. You know, it's like, I can't speak for everybody else, but sometimes I get pissed off. Yeah. And when I get pissed off, I want to say stuff. So, you yeah. know, I also think it's just the world, well, the society that we live in. We live in such a materialistic society full of social media where everybody can say exactly what's on their mind. So many things dividing us in this country, race, religion, economic values. I mean, the list goes on and on. Whenever yeah. you go to a monk temple, 14,000 feet on the side of a cliff, <laughs> you don't have Facebook. You don't have CNN. <laughs> you just, that's what, that's your entire world right there. And I mean, I would love to say that I would like to live that lifestyle, but I'd probably go crazy. I mean, just staying in one place your entire life and not speak yeah. to anyone is crazy. Yeah. But so, sometimes I like the idea of isolation. But at the same time, it's like, man, people may suck, but there's some people who suck a lot less than others, you know? And I want to go talk to those people, yeah. <laughs> you know? It, 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 I mean, just <clears throat> like interaction is such a beautiful thing. And the thing that. Yeah. I'm sure that they interact. How do they? You would have to think that, like, they have to talk somehow. I have to watch a documentary about that. I don't know too much. But, like, do they write it on a sheet of paper? What if one of them's getting chased by a bear? Or, like, <laughs> or, or like their house is on fire or something, and they have to warn everybody. How do they do that? I don't. They just yeah. ring a gong. Maybe. You know, three times for fire, four times for we're out of water, 
And there's that one deaf monk that's just screwed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's it's fascinating though that there are people like that on this planet. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're almost like aliens. It really is. Yeah, there was a. I watched a movie. I watched a lot of like Japanese films, um, and there's a lot of like Edo period films, which is like kind of like the golden era for Japan. You know, every the country was prosperous, and it's. When people think of Japan, that's what they think of. You know, everybody's walking around in kimonos and everything. And the um, <clears throat> bhikkhus and bhikkhunis, the monks, Buddhist monks, they would come into a village and they would, basically they would go around and they were beggars. You know, they couldn't like take money for work. So they would go in the town and basically ask for donations. Yeah. And <clears throat> I watched this one movie. Um, it's called The Suffering of Ninko. And it was about this monk in training who he would have to go into town and do all of this work for free, you know, like rebuild homes and plow fields and all this stuff, not get paid for it, and then have to go around and beg people for money. Yeah. You know. And then you have to go back to the temple and get beat with a stick because he wasn't concentrating hard enough, you know. And he gets, he ends up like getting tempted by this, like basically some kind of sex demon. But it was like an interesting thing to see how these people live because they would actually have to do that. You know, they would have to go do all this work for nothing and then look someone in the eye and be like, can I have some money? Like, I can't process that. You That's know? Very humbling. Very, yeah. very humbling. Yeah, incredibly. And that sort of interaction is like, I don't know, I just can't process having to do that. Although sometimes I feel whenever I'm playing shows and I got my little tip thing set up, I feel like I'm doing that. I'm, <laughs> you know? Huh. I never thought about it that way. Yeah. Because, like, you know, for whatever people, however people want to think of, like, local artists and people who go out and play music, that that's as essential as anything. Yeah. You people, know? Man, people need some form of entertainment, whether it's yeah. comedy or music or anything. We need those types of escapes. Exactly. And... I love playing music. I would do it if I didn't want to get paid for it. But the goal is to get paid for it. Yeah. You know, so I don't have to go to my day job anymore. But when I'm playing someplace and it's like, well, I'm giving you a service. So you can throw a dollar in the tip jar, you know. Yeah. You can give me some. And I, 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 well, people around here, I like to think, kind of understand a little bit more, but it breaks my heart whenever you go to these big cities and you see somebody standing on a street corner and their guitar case is practically empty, you know, and yeah. you're living in this big city where people definitely have money and oh, yeah. don't want to give out. It's, oh, get a job, you dirty hippie. I mean, that's, yeah. Get. But it's art that thrives the world. I mean, I don't think that. Well, I know that technology and education progresses a society, but I also think that it has a lot to do with art as well, especially music. I mean, like, uh, I don't know if it was Kurt Cobain that said music is what like keeps him alive. Like, it was a pack of Marlboro Reds, and uh, <laughs> I think like he had to listen to music every day. Some type of interview like yeah. that. But I mean, really, like, I couldn't imagine a life without music it would be almost meaningless to me i could yeah. do without money i could do without a lot of things but music especially is definitely not yeah. i couldn't do it man like i have a pretty decent vinyl collection and like that if i have a preferred way of listening to music it's through vinyl yeah 
but I don't get to sit down and listen to vinyl every day, you know. Yeah, it takes so a lot. I'm fine with streaming. <laughs> I can't take it my record player and put it in my car and listen to it while I'm driving, you know, flip the record over and all that. Like, I'm fine with that. But taking all of that away would just, it would be so miserable. Yeah. And, and, and that's why I'm so glad, that, like, things are finally starting to open up now. Uh, yeah. You're starting to see concerts pop up here and there. And, man, it's feels so good. I haven't been to a live show in quite a while, but hopefully we can get something soon. I know you play with a lot of people. Do you got anything going on? Um, <clears throat> April 24th. I think I'm getting that right in my head. April 24th, I'll be at the SIP in Paintsville. Nice. Um, I'll be playing with uh, Halo as part of her band. Um, and I think we're getting something at the App Center sometime in May. Cool. Um, and I'll actually be open. I'll do. I'll be doing like a 30-minute acoustic set for that one, um, opening up and then playing with her as part of her band that night. Um, and then after we get done here, I'm actually going to message a few people about getting some shows in Prestonsburg and Whitesburg. So, that's oh, fine. Yeah, and I'm working on. Try, I'm trying to get this album finished. That way, I got something I can like that gives me an excuse to get out and play. Yeah. You know? So I'm glad things are starting to open back up. And I've been kind of fortunate. There's been a few places that have let me come and play while this all has been going on. And that's been kind of like a, a ray of hope, <laughs> you know? It feels so, good, man. It really does. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. And I think it's going to – I think people are wanting it. Well, I know people are wanting it. but I, I think that people are feeling a lot better about doing it. Yeah. yeah. Now that once we get, once everybody gets vaccinated and all this stuff, like things are going to open back up, and I, I know things are just going to like go back full force. I think it'll be even better than it was before, man. Because like <clears throat> people have just been wanting it so much. Like we, I, I would already lost my mind at plenty of concerts, but I don't care if like it's somebody, somebody I don't even know. I'm just going to lose my mind just to be in a setting with people screaming and lights and loud sounds and yeah. oh I can't wait I can't wait yeah. it's, I, I played at a, Miley Cyrus I'll freak out over Miley Cyrus <laughs> at this point. man I played at a Broken Throne a couple weeks ago I seen where they're doing an open mic night uh, next week tomorrow night tomorrow night okay yeah tomorrow. yeah tomorrow night I'm gonna try to be there I gotta close at work but I think I can make it over there in time but uh I played there a couple weeks ago and it was weird having like people at every table. Yeah. You know, it was like, that's a good feeling. You know, people come out in a pandemic yeah. to watch you sing your little ditties, you know? It, it was like, I'll go back and watch like old concerts that I went to and I see people like hugging each other or elbow to elbow and like, you're almost and now it's like, it out it's like, now. yeah, it's like, Oh, why yeah. are they doing that? Yeah, like, yeah, like I got, oh, we used to do those things. Yeah, I seen an ad like where people were shaking hands earlier on the internet, and I'm like, have they been vaccinated? <laughs> <laughs> it's Man, okay. Have you seen the, uh, oh, I think it was Match.com with uh, Satan oh, the, yeah, the in 2020. Best commercial of 2020, hands oh down. Oh, my God, dude. Great. I, <laughs> I was I saw it on Hulu. I, th I think I was watching Bob's Burgers, and I saw it, and I'm like, they they went for it, and they achieved it. They yeah. achieved it. And then I saw it on TV. I was like, please tell me I'm gonna see this like everywhere. And I was like, oh my god. 2020 it matched up with Satan. For the people that haven't <laughs> seen these commercials, go check them out. God, like. It's it's very rare to find a good commercial nowadays. They hit the nail yeah. on the head. I forgot Match.com existed until yeah. a, until that commercial. It just revived everything. It did, man. I was like, oh, I hope they make more. <laughs> you know, and and they, I think there's like two or three of them now. They're doing like different things. There's one of them like they're hugging as like asteroids start pummeling <laughs> Earth, and they're like, oh, this is so beautiful. <laughs> you know. And it's like, okay, 
and there's one where they're sitting on the couch talking about what they love about each other and like she's talking about the toilet paper shortage (laughs) 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 okay (laughs) whoever their marketing director is that guy or gal deserves a big old pay raise huge huge pay raise but but man this has been a lot of fun unfortunately we're going to have to cut it off but dude thank you for this man this was Um, a lot of fun (laughs) Man, thanks for having me. I appreciate it, man. Hopefully next time I actually get to come in and we get to do it in the studio. Yeah, dude, we'll make it happen soon. As soon as, soon as all the craziness gets yeah. all that's going on, we'll get it worked out, man, and we'll make it happen. I'd like for you to uh, come in and, dude, your cover of Feathered Indians, I watched that a few weeks ago. <laughs> you killed it, dude. That's my thanks, favorite man. Tyler Childers song. And, man, I, I actually, like, I wanted you to come in here so I could, like, hear it live in person oh. <laughs> it breaks my heart that i don't get to but yeah next time that you come in man i'd love to hear your version of that all right cool man hopefully next time uh i'll have a cd to bring you so yeah man hell yeah so. but until next time scott thank you buddy thanks man